I am Karen Sainesu at the Centre for Surrogate Parenting. This is our seminar series. This seminar is entitled Children Through Surrogacy. You've done all of this work to finally have a child that you're taking home born through surrogacy and you think, I've done it, I'm at home, my journey's over. But your journey through surrogacy is not at an end at this point when you take your child home, for there arises the issue of disclosure. Talking to your child about their conception and birth is not a one-time event. A discussion is going to be a continual discussion that you're going to have over their lifetime. When a child says to you, how did I get out of your tummy? Listen carefully. They did not say to you, did I come out of your tummy? Typical questions of children between the age of three and six. How did I get out of your tummy? How was I born? Nothing to do with assisted reproductive technologies. You have a choice when your child comes to you and says, how did I get out of your tummy? You have a choice at this point of being honest and laying the groundwork for future conversations, or you can just cover up the truth. Sperm and egg donation is not an issue at this point with children so very young. When your child comes to you, this is the opportunity to introduce the concept that your child was born through the help of a very special lady. That mommy tried to carry you, but mommy's tummy was damaged. Or that daddies don't have a tummy that you could grow in, so we needed the help of a very special lady to help us. Mommy, daddy, daddies or mommies, the important thing that you want to say here is, we really, really wanted you. Where did I come from? What your child is really asking you when it comes to this question is, am I going to be forever connected to you? Is there a chance that we will not be connected? If you're telling your child that your child was born through egg donation, your child's going to wonder if anything happens to mommy, does that mean that I don't get, mo I don't get to live in this house with daddy anymore? Do I have to go back to my egg donor or my surrogate mom? So we need to make sure we're, we're answering all these questions for our children. What is important is not to make the mistake of thinking everything your child does and says is about ART, assisted reproductive technologies. These are perfectly normal children. I wish you were not my mommy. I wish you were not my daddy. This is not necessarily about ART. You know what, guys? This is just teenagers. All parents are much benefited from understanding what is normal development so they do not contaminate and get uncomfortable with what is normal and forget to see their children as normal children and not through the eyes of non-genetic or ART children. Sometimes they're just kids. I am very fortunate that when I travel around the world I'm often able to meet some of these wonderful, really wonderful children born through our program. And so what I've begun doing is interviewing some of these children, and I want to share some of this with you. When did you first understand you were born with the assistance of a surrogate mom? Morgan, who was 16 at the time. I don't really remember when I first understood how I was born. I just grew up knowing. Mum told me as a child, whenever I asked questions, she was straight out about it. So after a while, I just knew. Matt. Ever since I was old enough to understand, it was just part of the conversation. It really was never a big deal. Do you think the knowledge that you were born through surrogacy has made a difference in your life? Morgan, yes, as a child I felt different. Sometimes it was a special different. Lily, I feel that my parents went the extra mile to have me and that means I was more wanted. Chase. People put in time and effort to make me. I had lived my life the same way. Put more effort into everything I do. Chase then went on and said to me, you know sometimes when you're studying for your exams and you study really, really hard and then you say, okay, I got this. I'm going to get an A in the subject. I'm fine. And you put your books away. He says, I put my books away and then I think, Imagine if my parents had done that, if they just put in a good amount of effort into making me, but they didn't. So I take out my books again and I put extra effort into everything I do. Do you think your parents were brave to do surrogacy? 
Now I'm going to pause here for a minute because remember these children are older, so they're all between the age of 16 and, and I think they were 16 and 19 years old. So it's not the same as the world we're growing up in today where surrogacy is more accepted. So, do you think your parents were brave to do surrogacy? Morgan, it was their last option and I think they were brave to fight for me this long. Matt, my parents have always told me it is important to follow your dreams and never die wondering. Does this make them brave? My mom is not brave enough to go on a roller coaster with me, but she went through surrogacy to have a baby. CSP has been helping intended parents for almost 36 years now, and I have a few stories to share with you. CSP recently had a surrogate mom apply to our program and has since delivered in our program, but she was born through a surrogate mom. So her parents did surrogacy. She was born as a result of surrogacy. She has since then grown up, got married, had children of her own, and applied to our program, and she is now a surrogate mother in our program, and that's awesome. Uh, we also have seven surrogate mothers in our program whose mothers were surrogate moms in our program all those years ago. So we're on to our second generation of surrogate moms in our program. America and many other societies are open societies where we believe in openness, honesty, and integrity. We are all moving towards believing that children have the right to know their genetic beginnings. Your child is going to grow up in a world that embraces these values. Your surrogacy journey should not undermine the core values of your family's American heritage. And I know that many of my intended parents are not American because we come from all over the world, but your children fundamentally are going to be American since they were born in this wonderful country. The media. Here is my one issue that I have. So here are some um, advertising newspaper stories that I've seen. Renting a womb, women reduced to baby breeders, bodies for sale, surrogacy as child abuse. Um, there's a new documentary out there called Breeders, and they refer to children as products of surrogacy. In that documentary that I was just talking about, there are stories of three women who participated in independent surrogacy. And one of them is actually co-parenting, there's nothing to do with surrogacy. The reality is that this documentary is an outstanding example demonstrating the pitfalls of independent surrogacy. This is not really a story about surrogacy itself, but how to do surrogacy really, really badly. This documentary is also about infertility doctors and how they sometimes fail to follow the guidelines set up by ASRM. ASRM is the American Society of Reproductive Medicine of which we are all members. If you don't follow the guidelines that are there, you allow documentaries like this to be created. So in this documentary, you've got a surrogate mom who never had children of her own, which doctor would accept her as a surrogate mom. You had a surrogate mom that never went to a psychologist and got a clearance, so her and the couple were totally incompatible with each other. There's another case where the surrogate mom never had any legal contracts, so we never had legal clearance. None of these cases should have gone ahead if the infertility doctors had decided to follow the rules of ASRM and said, hey everyone, stop, let's do this the right way. An open discussion about surrogacy is one thing, but placing labels on our children is something different. Jennifer Lal and Matthew Epinet wrote, directed, and produced this documentary, and it blatantly created labels that are going to burden our children. We all need to look at society's attitudes and understanding of the stigmas that children bear when they are the result of different family building options and the labels we are burdening them with. So many years ago, we would refer to adoptive children and birth mothers as loose women, hookers, whores, their children were illegitimate, they were labeled as bastards on their medical files. You know what? It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. Freedom of speech is one thing, but freedom of speech versus the rights of our innocent children, we need to have a balance. I would like to thank Lily, Chase, Morgan, and Matt for helping me with the seminar and to Faye Johnson for sharing your awesome children with us. And I would like to have a special thanks to Dr. Hilary Hannafin. Without your wisdom, caring, and remarkable matching abilities, Hilary 
none of these children would be here. Thank you.